Okay, just a couple of things about navigating the river. Um, generally, you want to float down the river with your boat oriented at about a 45 degree angle to the opposite bank. And here we're coming into a corner that's uh, fairly deep, so we've got plenty of water. We're not going to ground out. But I want my bow pointed at the bank uh, at a downstream angle at about 45 degrees. That gives me the maximum leverage to pull away from any obstacles. Um, typically, on wooded rivers, all of your log jams and things like that are going to be uh, trapped against the outside of the bend and that's because that's where the greatest force of the current runs and it tends to drift all those logs and debris up against the bank. So we want to stay point, we want to keep our boat pointed at that stuff so that allows us to back row and get away from the obstacles. Now a couple of things about rowing strokes. Um, back rowing is this movement right here where you pull back with both oars. That's called back rowing. Forward rowing or push rowing is like this. You plant your blades and you push forward. And uh, you don't get a lot of power out of push rowing. Back rowing is by far your most powerful stroke. And then you've got single oar and double oar turns. A single oar turn, I'm planting my right oar and I'm turning like that, but I'm leaving my left oar out of the water. A double oar turn is where I plant one oar behind me and the other one in front of me and I pull with one and push with the other, or I can do it the other way. Double oar turns are really handy on small rivers where you have to do a lot of maneuvering. And you'll, you'll do variations of both just to keep your boat oriented correctly. Right now we're coming into another turn and the river's turning to river left. That turn that we just did was a river right turn and now we're snaking back the other way. So I'm coming in at an angle to the bank and this is the transition zone where I'm switching my angle of, of my boat. I was angled at a 45 degree left angle on that last corner and now I'm angled 45 degrees to the right um, as we come into this other bend right here. I want to talk for a minute about the high bank side and the low bank side. Uh, most of the rivers that people hunt in Alaska um, are slow class one or two rivers and this river is a class one. The current runs along at about two to two and a half miles an hour. But even with that slow current, uh, you can have quite a bit of hydraulic pressure uh, from the moving water. And what it'll do is it'll scour out the bank on the, the opposite of each bend. And what that does is it creates an eroded bank on the, the uh, outside of the bend. And you can see here we've got a fairly steep bank. These are really hard to get to if you're trying to get in and out of the boat. Uh, also, that high bank like that makes it not only difficult to get in and out of the boat, but it makes it uh, difficult to tie off. And uh, campsite selection is generally poor on the high bank side. This is all hummocky and just not really good for camping. On the other hand, if we go to the low bank side, which is on the inside of the bend, or the ground is generally flatter, you have slower current there, the campsite selection is usually in addition to the, the, uh, those features on the low bank side, you also have pretty good visibility upstream and downstream. So what I'll do if I'm camping on a bank like this is I'll try to camp clear out on the end of the point if I can, and that allows me to see downstream and upstream right from camp. In some cases though, the vegetation is too tight to the river and you can't do that. So you'll have to camp on the low bank side, and then once you've got your boat unloaded, you can row over to the opposite side to the high bank side and that'll give you the upstream and downstream visibility that you need when you're hunting. All right, I wanna talk about a couple of safety items here. Uh, for starters, you can see that we've got our load tied down pretty good here. Um, you wanna make sure that everything uh, is secured to the boat and that way if you do run into a sweeper or a strainer or something like that, you're not gonna lose items over the side. The other thing is you want to make sure that your bow line is stowed in such a way that you can deploy it out. Uh, you don't want a big wad of bow line at your feet. Uh, what happens uh, with, the, with loose lines like that is if you do have a capsizing situation or even if the line's just hanging over the side, it can get hung up on an obstacle and it can grab the whole boat and just jerk you around. It can knock things off. It can actually capsize you uh, if the rope gets tied around or gets looped around an obstacle of some kind. In addition to that, um, you can get tangled up in the line yourself and then if, if the boat does capsize or if for some reason you fall over the side and you're hung up in that line, um, if it's a, a flat section like this, where you're fine. They can just pull you in and you can climb back in the boat and you're just wet. 
but if it's a situation that's requiring a lot of navigation from the oarsman, uh, i.e. fast water, etc., uh, they might not be able to get to you right away and you're getting drug along by that bow line. So you can actually drown if you get hung up in that line. So I always stow my bow line in a, in a manner that we can deploy it out really easily. The other reason for stowing our bow line like that is if we come into the shore and we need to tie off real quickly, uh, in other words if we've got a fairly fast current or maybe we saw an animal up on the bank and we want to get after it, um, I might have to put my hunter who's in the bow, I might, I might have to put him on the bank really quickly and in order to do that I'm going to push row into the bank really fast, he's going to grab the bow line and he's going to jump out and, and secure the boat. So you want to keep that bow line uh, stowed in such a way that it can be deployed really quickly. Thank you.